Hey folks, Nathan here. And have you ever been in this situation? You try to shoot something with a ball person, but you get this terrible shine on the top of their head. <laughs> Ideally, this would be fixed on the day with diffusion, but sometimes that's not possible. So if you're in post-production, there's a way that you can make it disappear. And by the end of this video, you'll have some tools in your toolbox to be able to do just that. So let's get into it. So we have our fancy looking businessman and at the beginning on the top of his head, you can see we got some shiny spots. Now if we check our waveform, we can see that it's not clipped. So this is totally salvageable. And the two major factors to address, we need to get some color into this area. So we need the right hue and saturation. And we also need to reduce the contrast of this area, adjusting the luminance. And I can show you exactly what I mean. If we go to our qualifier tool, right click and show pick our RGB value. We're then going to zoom in on our head here. And as we kind of scan around, let's just look at the red channel. So you'll see away from the shiny spot is about 210, 209. But as we get to the shiny spots, we get much higher, 241, 242. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out it's brighter here than it is over here. But when we finish, we'll get it looking like this. And now if you check the luminance differences, so again, 208, coming over here, the highest we get is maybe 227, maybe 228. So we've reduced that contrast and you can obviously tell that we've adjusted the hue and saturation. So how do we do it? So let's delete everything and start from the beginning, new node with Alt S. Okay, we'll zoom out here with Z on our keyboard. And first thing we wanna address is that contrast that we're talking about. So you may think to yourself, ah, we need to reduce the contrast. So I'll just take this slider and bring that down and that's not even gonna get you close to where you wanna go. So when I'm talking about contrast here, I'm actually talking about the contrast at edges, also defined as sharpness. So one way that we can easily adjust this in this area is we can just adjust our midtone detail. We bring that down. You'll see that we're much more even keel across the entire image. But if we zoom out, now it's really soft looking. And maybe you don't want that, which is totally fair. I don't want that either. So what we're going to do is we're going to qualify our image here. We have our qualifier tool selected. We're then going to select our skin, use our highlight tool and finesse as needed. So now we have just our skin selected. So if we zoom out here, you can see that we have something looking like this, but again, we're losing quite a bit of detail in his face and that's not exactly what we want. We just want this one specific area. So we'll go into our windows and we will create a power window just on his noodle here, right around this area there. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we have to track it because there's some movement throughout the shot. So easy way to track this, we go into our tracker window and then we track our forward and reverse and just wait. So now that we're tracked, we can see how it's looking and it's definitely looking a bit better, but you'll notice we got this big old box around his head. You don't want that. So we're just gonna soften up that box a little bit. And now, yeah, it's looking much better than where we started from. And we're going very extreme with the midtone detail. You may not need to go that extreme. So now we add a new node with Alt S and we wanna use that qualification that we grabbed earlier. So instead of doing it all over again, we're gonna hit Control C on our keyboard and then Control V. We're then going to disable our power window and just get rid of this midtone detail adjustment. And now we have that nice key. So we're trying to adjust the color. An easy way to do this is to use your color compressor tool in DaVinci Resolve Studio. Now we're going to select a specific color on his face here. Let's go with right on his forehead, right underneath the area. Now we can compress hue to get it closer to that color, compress the saturation, which again will add some more saturation and color in that area and adjust our luminance to maybe bring it down a little bit. And let's just go, let's just go darker there. Yeah, perfect. So now if we zoom out, we're sitting here. So you can see the before and after of that node and it's looking much closer. So now we're getting somewhere, but it's not perfect. So we can increase our luminance and yeah, we're definitely getting it much less bright in that area, but now our image looks absolutely ridiculous. So let's adjust our key. We only want these really bright portions of the image so we can bring down our saturation a little bit. Obviously not as saturated. That's what we're trying to fix. Yeah, we just want the highest brightness. And then we just dial in our luminance to something that actually is reasonable. And now you can see the before and the after of that node and we're looking much better and the entire before and after. But let's get a little more advanced with it. So in this shot, again, we have movement, 
but you'll notice that the glare actually changes its position where it is on his head. So right here, it's a little bit darker of an area with all the hair, and up here, it's now on his forehead where there's no hair underneath. And here's where that becomes a little bit of a problem. So we'll start off by qualifying our specific area that we're looking to adjust and finesse as needed. So now across the image, we have a good key going on there. And then we can copy this node, bring down our midtone detail scooch, create a new node with Alt S and copy that over. And then we bring in our color compressor, just like before, choose our target color. Let's pick somewhere on his head, maybe down here, and then just adjust your settings as you see fit. So now let's see how it looks. So as we go through our image, it's looking good, but we have a little bit of a problem. If we turn this off and on again, you'll notice that it's creating a bald spot on his head. So he obviously has hair here. He should at least. It seems consistent with the rest of his head, but now we're creating a bald spot because we chose this color as his head. So we can change our color and select, let's say somewhere around here. So it matches the hair color as we zoom out, but now we're giving him kind of a hair color over here. So we need to use keyframes. So we go to the beginning of our clip, we select our keyframe for the target color, and we move through the clip when we think it should be the right spot to be on his forehead color, we now make that adjustment here. So now as we scrub through a clip, you'll see it's a seamless transition. And as we see the before and the after, we've definitely done a lot to reduce that glare and just make his head look that much nicer. And it's just that easy. So if you like this video, be sure to hit that button, get subscribed for lots more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye.